The open highway, practically itching to be explored, and why not do it in all the creature comforts of a large diesel-powered RV? With all the amenities of home and a diesel-powered powertrain, you're practically guaranteed unending, ceaseless happiness in your golden years. Well, not exactly. And in this video, we're going to be discussing misconceptions about owning a diesel RV. Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Ape channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing a topic, RVs, that I've been wanting to make a video on for a little while. And why do I want to make a video on that? Because there's tons of these RVs, at least in North America here, where I'm making this video. And a lot of people buy them expecting things that they don't end up getting or they accumulate a lot of costs they didn't end up expecting. And I kind of want to dispel some myths or some misconceptions about owning these or buying these and try to help people have a better understanding of what they're buying or getting themselves into before they buy them. That is the reason why I'm making the video. So let's get into the video. Okay, so the first topic I want to discuss that's kind of a misconception is that people buy diesel engines in their large RVs, mostly because that's the only available engine option for them, and they expect really, really, real longevity out of these engines. I have a video discussing diesel engines and some that go over a million miles between rebuilds. I've even heard stories of 2 million maybe miles between a rebuild on certain engines, mostly 15 liter cats, some others. And people think that, hey, I'm going to buy a diesel engine and it only has 80,000 miles on it. I still have 900,000 miles to go before that engine's going to need to be rebuilt. That's almost 100% not true. And the reason for that is Diesel engines can last that long, but that doesn't mean they necessarily will. Most of it has to do with the driving style. RVs, in general, get very low miles and very little use per year, at least mileage-wise, because they're so expensive to operate. And unlike a truck where you're generating income driving the truck, the RV is strictly a cost. Unless it's a business RV, but that's very rare. So what do I mean by you're not going to get that million miles? Well, you have to remember that there are two types of wear that can accumulate or two types of faults that can accumulate in your engine. There is mileage accumulated wear, let's say cylinder wear or injector life from spraying. And then there's age wear. So if an engine's 20 years old and it's only around 80,000 miles, all the components are also 20 years old. That counts for wiring harness to the injectors, the electronic parts of the injectors themselves, seals, rings, any fluids. You know, obviously, hopefully, fluids have been changed, but these components deteriorate over time, and they can really cost you a lot. Liner seals, for instance, basically, you have to disassemble the entire engine to reseal an engine that needs liner seals, even though it might have very low miles on it. So... Don't expect you're going to get a million miles out of your diesel engine if it's in an RV just because some trucks get a million miles. That's one misconception. Now getting into the second misconception a lot of people have is they don't realize that the increased maintenance costs of keeping up an RV, it's going to cost you a lot more than your car or your truck to keep it running. Oil changes are very expensive. If you have a very large RV with let's say a 15 liter or 13 liter engine, probably holds about 10 gallons of oil. The oil's about $10 per gallon, depending on where you go. Plus, they're usually going to lube the chassis, which means greasing all the Zerks. You're going to have usually two fuel filters. So oil changes are going to cost you, at a minimum, a couple hundred dollars. Even if you did it yourself, just the fluids and the filters, it's more money. There's also other filters that are going to need to be replaced more. Like I said, there's fuel filters. Like on a car, you don't usually change them that often. On a diesel, you're usually going to change them every service. Also, the air cleaner, it's very expensive usually. It's usually about $100 to $150. It's usually large canisters type air filter. And usually you're going to get that changed maybe one to every two years. There's also an air dryer filter that needs, it should be serviced every year, although most people don't service them. But that protects your brakes from moisture and oil getting in them. There's a lot of other things you have to consider as well. The tires on an RV are very expensive. These aren't automotive tires, they're truck tires. So if you have, you want to get all new Michelin tires, you're talking thousands of dollars, not just a few hundred like on your car. 
And just like the engine components, they break down with age, not just mileage. Though there might not be that, mi that many miles on your tires, there's going to be a lot of wear just from sun damage and heat damage, you know, might hit something in the road. Now, there's even more maintenance items on the RV other than just the engine and the air dryer system for the brakes. Many RVs also have a diesel or sometimes a propane powered generator. Many of the larger ones are going to have a diesel powered one though. That also has to be serviced annually or should be. And this of course is going to cost you more money. They usually hold about a gallon of oil. There's usually an air filter, an oil filter, and a fuel filter with them. So you're talking also more labor to service them. Not only that, RVs are battery heavy. Usually there are three to four chassis batteries. So these are batteries powering the engine and basically everything outside of the house. Now the house, you know, the house, the RV side, the living quarters are going to usually have house side batteries too. These are usually deep cycle batteries, which are usually a little more expensive. Usually there'll be four to six of those batteries. And of course, batteries, you can lose a cell in one and then it can draw down the other ones. They of course get damaged with excessive heat or excessive cold, excessive cranking, and they deteriorate over time and batteries are expensive. If you're looking at changing out all your house batteries and all your chassis batteries, even at $100 a battery, which would be pretty cheap, you're talking about $1,000 there plus labor, unless you do it of yourself, of course. So these are all items to keep in mind before buying your RV, okay? Like I said, I'm not trying to discourage you. I just want you to know the facts up front. Now, outside of scheduled maintenance, there's, of course, breakdowns or check engine lights. Items like this, things that you can't really plan for, these can get extremely costly for you. For one, most diesel dealerships, Cat Dealer, Cummins, the Freightliner dealer, they're going to charge you usually a higher rate than the truck rate because it's an RV. And many mechanics don't like working on RVs. I've worked on hundreds of them. I personally don't mind working on RVs. Some guys really hate RVs and I do not want to work on them. So you have to keep that in mind. Also, many dealerships aren't like a car dealership where I'm going to take my car there, they're going to give me a rental car, and I'll have my head gasket fixed in two days. Diesel's usually much longer wait times in general, depending where you're at, of course, and the turnaround time is much slower. So keep that in mind if you're planning on living on it, in it. If you have a major component breakdown, you might have to get a hotel for a week or more, depending on what needs fixed. Now, not only with the higher service rates, parts costs are really expensive on diesels, especially cats. So let's take a real common RV engine, a C7 that was, this was put in a lot of RVs through the mid 2000s up to 2010. And they had a lot of Huey problems. Now the Huey problem is the fuel system that fires the injectors. So if you have a failure in the Huey system, that can wipe out the Huey pump and all the injectors. And we're talking about $4,000 in parts here, plus labor, and that's usually at the higher labor rate. So even a non-rebuild failure can end up costing you five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. And this isn't even a rebuild. This is just a repair to the engine. So you have to keep that in mind that this engine is, while very efficient, and reliable can cost you a lot of money. Now, if you're looking to buy one, you've probably heard of an extended warranty for your RV. These are usually offered by the dealer or a third party, wherever you're buying your RV. You wouldn't be buying this from the actual Freightliner, Cummins, or Cat dealer, although usually they'll offer an engine warranty. What they're talking about here is a basically an RV warranty, and this is usually a third party. And these are fairly expensive. I've seen people pay five, six, seven thousand dollars for these warranties. And of course the warranty claims it'll cover just about everything on the RV. And usually when people go to use them, they find that one of two things. It's kind of a hassle to use. Uh, most shops don't like processing the warranty repairs for a couple reasons. And the warranty rarely covers the entire cost of the repair. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, let me give you a scenario. We had an RV that came in and it had a problem with the fuel pump. And this was a common rail fuel pump and the access to it was pretty bad. And they had an extended warranty. So they're thinking, okay, well, 
you know, we paid all this money for this extended warranty. It'll cover any repair costs. Luckily, you know, just fix it. Well, so we get the third party warranty involved. We give them the price of the part. It's about $1,500. The problem is the labor is about 16 hours. So two full days of labor at the high rate of $147.50. So you're talking over $2,000 in labor. You're talking the part cost. So you're talking about $3,500, give or take, plus taxes. And one of the main problems is the extended warranty always has to give you prior authorization before you do a repair. So... You do your troubleshooting, you then have to submit the claim. Usually the extended warranty company will then hold on to the claim and not approve it right away. A lot of the times they'll send out an inspector or they'll want additional documentation. This will usually delay the repair process by a day, maybe multiple days, and your coach is just sitting in the shop. Not only that, when they get it, they are always gonna nitpick on the hours. Now the dealer doing the time or doing the repair, they're not gonna lose money on a repair. So they're still gonna need that 16 hours of labor, but let's say the extended warranty only wants to pay four hours labor. You're on the hook for the other 12 hours. So you've already paid for the extended warranty. They're covering a portion of it, and you're gonna be responsible after your deductible for the additional repair time before the shop will do the work. So they ended up having to pay over $1,000 plus their deductible, to fix the repair that was covered under the warranty. Now, that's not to say don't ever buy an extended warranty. I'm just letting you know what usually happens on an RV with an extended warranty, a third-party warranty. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, the other thing to consider if you're buying an RV is don't expect it to be an investment that's going to hold its value. An RV loses a value more so than a car does. This is not like a house where... You might buy it and the market might increase and decrease, but generally it's gonna keep its value just the same as all the other houses on your street. An RV is not gonna do that. It's gonna lose a tremendous amount of value. If you don't believe me, check an RV that's new and then check an RV that's roughly the same model 10 years down the road. It's probably lost 70% of its value. It They drop a lot in value. So if you're gonna be getting one, you probably want to look for a used one. Now, of course, a used one is going to have older components and probably require more maintenance, but you really got to think, you know, what you're putting your money into here and, you know, are you willing to lose that much of an investment in money for the RV opposed to buying a slightly older one? That's your call. Now, I hope you enjoy this video. I really am not trying to discourage you. I just want you to understand what you might be getting into before purchasing an RV. And now it's time for a little segment I like to call... This destruction of the week, we have a C9S industrial engine and one of these valves is not like the others. Uh, this engine was a crank no start condition, and it wouldn't even start on ether, so we knew something was going on. You can see that it's got some pretty bad valve damage. Now, you can see that valve that's flipped sideways is actually a different valve. That's not the one where the uh, we were pulling the valve spring off there. And I'm going to put my phone under it here, and you'll see that uh, most of the valve heads are just gone. So, there's one of them, just gone. Here is the sideways one, pretty broken, and I'm going to show you what the piston looked like, uh, pretty bad. It's just disintegrated, and uh, the other cylinders had damage to the pistons as well, all six of them. Hope you enjoyed the video.